So can we just give Christopher Nolan all the Oscars now, or do we still have to wait until March 10th? Talk, shop, pop, movies. Oh, hey there, this is Derek, the Convicted Cinephile, and if you're a Convicted Cinephile yourself, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel down below. On my channel, I like to talk, shop, and pop open, that is, movies and physical media, and welcome to another episode of Meet the Contenders. Oppenheimer explosion in music. I don't have the budget for that, but just imagine those things. Yeah, this was an obvious thing I was going to do. I'm surprised I didn't do it sooner. Uh, let's just start with saying congratulations, uh, Mr. Oppenheimer, if you're around, if you can hear this, for winning five Golden Globe Awards last night. You won Best Picture Drama. Christopher Nolan won Best Director. Finally, Killian Murphy won best actor over bradley cooper that was a good race i'm glad killian won i prefer the film and i like more subtle acting performances and robert downey jr started his inevitable sweep in best supporting actor and of course the amazing score by Ludwig gordson also took the gold home everyone and their grandma has already seen Oppenheimer, but if you haven't, it is a biopic about Robert Oppenheimer, the creator of the atomic bomb back in World War II times. If that is that is what the film is about, a lot of people were mad at the movie, saying it didn't show the actual bombs falling on Japan, which that is not what the movie is about. It is about the man and his conflict and struggle with doing this and having done this once it happens. It's not about, cool, look at those people on fire. That would be terrible. This is a great movie from a great director at the top of his game, I would say. This is Christopher Nolan's best pound-for-pound -pound film overall. He's had amazing ones in the past, but there's always been a flaw here and there. I don't think there's anything wrong with this movie. I've only watched it the one time in theaters, which was amazing. But upon rewatches, we'll see. Maybe I'll pick and choose things I don't like about it. The biggest knock you can give the movie, without bitching about how long it is, which I don't do, is that it's just not something I could rewatch over and over and over again. It's not like a fun movie to go back to. It's as close to one as you can get, <laughs> given its subject matter, because it's so well made and it's so entrancing for various reasons I'll get into briefly. But that is really the only downside to the movie is that it's not a super fun rewatch. It's like Schindler's List. It's like, I love the movie. It's a perfect 10 out of 10 film for me. And I like to watch it more than most people. But it's not something you're like, oh, I really want to go watch Schindler's List today. You know what I mean? But I'm just going to go into it category by category, sort of. And at the end, I'll say all of the nominations I think it will get at the Oscars and probably win in some of them as well. That's what this is about. A little bit about the movie, a little bit about its awards chances at the end of the season. I think it is going to be a double-digit nominee, full stop. I can't imagine it getting fewer than 10 Oscar nominations. I will try to list them off. <laughs> I don't have it, like, written down or anything. Um, it's going to get Best Picture. It's going to get Best Director. It's going to get Best Actor. It's going to get Best Supporting Actor. It's going to get Best Supporting Actress, most likely, as well. It's going to get Best Screenplay. It's going to get Best Score. It's going to get Best Editing. It's going to get, probably, Costume Design and Art Direction. What am I thinking? What am I missing? It should be a shoe-in for Cinematography as well. That is the other category that Oppenheimer will get nominated in and should probably win. The mix of black and white and color and just the amazing light, especially the detonation sequence, is just absolutely breathtaking. And it has a damn good shot of winning at least half of those on top of it. I think it is the front runner for Best Picture, not just because it won at the Globes, but it just it feels right at the moment. We'll see where all the other Guild Awards go. The Directors and Screen Actors Guild are nominating this week. And it has one of the best ensemble casts overall. On top of the three actors that should and will be getting nominated at the Oscars, you've got Josh Hartnett coming back from out of nowhere. It was nice to see him, and everyone's great in this movie. He's fantastic. My favorite smaller role in the film was David Krumholtz. I've always liked him, and he's my favorite... Like I said, supporting, supporting, supporting role. Because, like, Robert Downey Jr. is the supporting role. 
and everyone else is supporting, supporting, because <laughs> they're only in a scene or two. You got uh, Benny Safdie. He was hilarious in, his <laughs> in the movie. I liked him a lot. It deserves, on top of all the Oscar stuff, a SAG Ensemble nomination and potential win, because the size of this cast is ridiculous. And if everyone who's in the movie votes for it, for SAG Ensemble, um, it has to win, just by default, because everyone who is working in Hollywood seems to be in the film. Killian Murphy seems like he at least has a 50-50 shot of winning. It seems like it's between, or I should say, one in thir three chances. Because Paul Giamatti is the one I actually personally hope wins at the Oscars, because I've loved him for all of my days. But uh, if it's not Giamatti, I want it to be Murphy, and I would still love if Bradley Cooper won. So I'm not going to be mad at the Best Actor category this year. It's going to be one of those three. If it's anyone else, that's going to be like a holy shit moment. Uh, Best Supporting Actor... I can't not see it being Robert Downey Jr. It's the perfect example of a career and perfect role win. Emily Blunt will finally be getting her Oscar nomination. She's very overdue for her, but she's just coming along for the ride. I don't see any reality sh of her winning, personally. It should win and will win score, editing, and best sound design. There's no reason it should lose any of those three things. <laughs> the score and editing in this film are almost like a character all on their own. They work together so well, and Christopher Nolan directs the shit out of it, and he's going to win too. If this wins one award, it's going to be Christopher Nolan for Best Director. It's going to pull a power of the dog and win just Best Director. Nolan is so good at using pacing and editing and music and sound to build up his films until they have like this crescendo two-thirds of the way through it, which is what happens at Oppenheimer, and it just peaks at the perfect moment, and it's like an orgasm of audio, and I love it. <laughs> that's the, that's the, the least gross way I could explain it. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it seems like a guaranteed double-digit nominee. It might be, it, 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 it's, it could get nine, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll admit, but it has a damn good shot of winning most of those nine or ten that it's nominated for, so... I'll be updating my Oscar predictions as we go, and I probably won't need to move it around too much because I'm sure I have it winning most of those already. That is what I feel about Oppenheimer's awards chances. Like I said, everyone's already seen this movie, so this is going to be a simple video. I'm not going to go super in-depth into the film. I just wanted to give the gist of it for the two of you that haven't seen it, maybe, and say, go out and see Oppenheimer. What are you waiting for? Yes, it's three hours long. But it's one of the most intense, quickest three-hour-long movies you're ever going to sit through. Once again, my name is Derek, the Convicted Cinephile. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. I want to do a couple more of these here and there throughout the season for the big contenders, especially once the Best Picture nominees for the Oscars comes out. I'll try to do one for at least those ten films. I congratulated Oppenheimer on its Golden Globes wins. It seems unstoppable, but that's not always the case. Check out my most recent video where I talk about five Golden Globe winners, most of which that won Best Picture, that ended up getting goose-egged at the Oscars. And just last year, it happened to both Best Picture winners. And I go into that in that video, show you what it, what they won, what it should have won at the Oscars, but sadly, they did not. So winning at the Globes technically doesn't mean shit, because they're not the same people voting at the Golden Globes that vote at the Oscars, but getting on stage and having a nice fancy speech in front of millions of people, can never hurt. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Talk. Shop. Pop. Movies.